Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today's job is going to be on the E30. The last episode I was able to switch over the harness to one I had already kind of wired up for the Mega Squirt unit. Today's going to be finishing up all of the other kind of sensors and items needed to run the Mega Squirt and hopefully with the right base map tune in we'll be able to start the card today. So just going over a few things that I need to do. Obviously got to put the relays back in, um, make sure that I have the TPS wired up properly. Mega Squirt's supposed to run on a variable uh, throttle position sensor, which comes on later model BMWs and not the E30. So I just have to double check that um, how I have it wired up, which is when I used to have Mega Squirt in the car, it gets confusing. Um, but I have it wired up for the variable TPS. I just need to make sure that I either need to flip a couple pins to make it work on the normal one just to get the car started, or I can try to see if I can fit on a variable TPS. But I think. I need a special mounting bracket to be able to fit the throttle body at this point. And the other thing I'll have to do is figure out how I'm going to wire in my uh, wideband O2 sensor. And of course, I'll have to take out the old one and then get the new wideband installed into the exhaust. Just to have some fun and look at how dirty it is under here. Here's my O2 sensor. You can see the wire is pretty caked up with some sludgy oil. Up in that trans tunnel is pretty nasty. I think that's what the trans mount bracket or whatever we want to call it. I do feel like I put these uh, bushings in since I've owned the car obviously, but they don't look too bad. They should be relatively new. There's our patchwork brake job from the end of last year. As I lay under here in the dark, um, if anybody has any recommendations for good lights, I've just been using a headlamp for everything, but uh, like a, I've seen the big magnetic lights, they look pretty cool, and I think they would do me a, a world of wonder if anybody could recommend a good one. All right, let's get this O2 sensor off. I just want everybody to be proud of me because I have the right tool for the job, so hopefully this sensor comes off nice and easy. So for as dirty as that O2 sensor was, I was worried it was gonna be like locked in there. It came out surprisingly easy, and I think it could be argued that maybe it wasn't even tight, but it's out, happy to have it out. We'll get the other one in now. So I'm trying to remember back six or seven years ago when I originally put the Mega Squirt in this car. Can't remember how to do it, I'm digging around. I never removed this set of, this wire out of the car, and it basically runs in between the console pieces. So this is the plug that's on the end of the O2 sensor. You can see it here. And for the, you know, six years that I haven't had Mega Squirt in the car or the wideband sensor, I've left this in here. So somehow I had my O2 sensor through the bushing, dust shield, whatever we want to call it, of the shift lever. It feels wrong, but I, I think that's what I had. And then we have this little controller thing that tells you if it's on or not. This must have run through the firewall and connected into the harness there where the normal O2 sensor connects. So I gotta figure, it just feels wrong, but I gotta figure out how to get the O2 sensor through the shift lever hole in the, I guess the trans tunnel and get it down into the exhaust. Got the wideband O2 sensor installed and I did run it through kind of the edge of the dust shield boot grommet thing. And then I have it connected here, just kind of tucked up against the side. I made sure that all, all the gears can be reached and it's not like bumping into anything or cutting out any of the space. So I'll go ahead, get that piece connected, and then fish the rest of this through the firewall and start working on the electrical connections there. I will say, I kind of do feel like I hacked some things together. So if anybody knows of better ways to do things, just please let me know. I'm willing to learn and I'm trying to, you know, make this car as good as I can while I'm still trying to learn and figure things out. For this job and any other ones, if I do something a little silly and maybe not proper, let me know, I'm down to learn. We'll see how it goes from there. And then hopefully on the next job or the next time around, I can do everything just a little bit better. So I'm getting ready for the wiring of the wide band. I have the wires coming from the control, the wideband controller. You see I've already stripped off, hopefully it doesn't really want to focus, but you can see I've stripped off the red wire and the black wire. And then off of the wiring harness for the car, I've stripped off the green blue one and the brown one um, to connect them. 
I have these little guys. I'm gonna try to use these just because then if I don't get the right combination because I'm not entirely sure, um, I'll be able to reconnect them and try again without having to cut wires. Looking through the internet, I think I have the right wires. So that green blue one should connect to my wide band red and then the brown should connect to my wide band black. So we're gonna give that a go. The other two wires coming out of the wide band are a signal. Um, so if I had a AFR gauge, I would be able to wire those up and then you know power the, the gauge that way. But I don't have any AFR gauges right now. Um, what I'll use for the initial setup and the, the initial tune is just, uh, I'll have my laptop running the Mega Squirt Tuner Studio. Um, so I'll be able to follow my AFRs that way. Maybe down the road, I would like to add some gauges but I just don't have that yet. So we'll wire this up and then um, that gets us one step closer to finishing up for the day. For the Mega Squirt, you have to run some hose for vacuum pressure into the back of it. Um, so I was gonna tee in a line from the fuel regulator that connects here to the manifold. I was gonna put a little T here, run that through the firewall into the Mega Squirt. Um, as I was taking off that line, you can just see how brittle it was. It actually tore the little ends on the fuel pressure regulator. Um, and then all I have to do is really just kind of rub this a little bit. And the line's like deteriorating. So uh, good thing. I think this line was done and needed a new one anyway. So at this point, I think I have everything hooked up. The engine looks like it's ready to go. I have the Mega Squirt all hooked up. Put it back in the glove box where it should be. The door is able to close fine. And right now, I have the controller to my dinosaur of the laptop. It hasn't been charged in forever, so just still have it connected to the wall for now. Um, and I'm going to just cycle on the car so that we can start detecting it. I should have a base map, and then we'll get that loaded up into this project and we'll see if the car starts. Just going for the default setup right now. I actually don't have high hopes for this, but we're gonna try a first start. We have everything set up here. Okay. Okay, good news, we got the car running. Uh, everything sounded healthy, sounded normal. Uh, I was able to rev it up a little bit, so it's responsive in that sense. Um, what I'm not seeing where the AFRs go up on the screen. Um, so maybe, maybe there's something I need to poke around with the wideband just to figure that out. Um, I don't really wanna drive it without the AFRs looking fine at idle. It doesn't smell any different than it normally does, so it, it I think it I think it's all running fine, but maybe the sensor's not getting picked up with the wiring I did, so maybe I need to tell tell the system a little bit differently how to pick it up. Uh, so just a few more things to dig into, but a uh, good start. I think everything's looking good with the Mega Squirt installed in the BMW. Still gotta figure out what's going on with the wideband. It it's lighting up green, solid green, so it's good, it's being red, it's calibrated. Um, it's just not being picked up in the tuner studio, so I might just try to mess around with some of the, the mixtures to see if I can get any reaction from it uh, and then you know revert back to what's working good. Um, I think once we have a few cars cleared out of the driveway, I'll take it out for a little spin around the block just to make sure the drivability is there. I remember the last time I had it on, there were a few times where you get a little lunging going in and like lugging when you're in the lower RPM. So I just wanna double check all that. Um, but now that everything's looking good, you know, it's, it's definitely moving in the right direction. Um, I got to finish up that last wire to get the tack working again. It was that black wire coming out of the ECU. So I'll get that hooked up and we'll be good for that. I think overall it's uh, a pretty good progress. Um, yeah, one step closer to the ITBs. So it took me all about one night thinking it over on why I wasn't getting a uh, wideband reading. And, you know, although I'm not running a gauge, so I didn't think I needed those extra wires, I was thinking that maybe in this case that the tuner studio for Mega Squirt acts as a gauge. 
So I need to hook up those other two wires and hopefully we can get a signal from there. Fix the problem just by hooking up those wires. Now Tuner Studio is picking up a reading. It's just miscalibrated now. So I have to kind of figure that out. So I just need to calibrate it and then hopefully that'll kind of solve that issue. The car will idle nicely. It kind of maintains nicely once the car's warmed up. It's a little, it idles a little high, I guess on cold start, but it does level out after that. Um, I haven't taken it for a drive yet, but it, it's idling nice. It's in the garage nice. So I'm pretty hopeful that everything's gonna work out with how I have it hooked up. So yeah, that should be what I've done for getting the Mega Squirt 2 hooked up and wired in. I'm not gonna do any tuning uh, on the car as it sits now. I'm gonna save that for once I have the ITBs on. So we'll get the ITB switched over here shortly and then, and then all the tuning will happen. So how it is now is just good enough to make sure that everything's wired up and working properly. Yeah, be sure to subscribe to come back for the next episode, which should have the ITBs going on.